rates in some schools lower than in the wider community. In a new report, CDC researchers looked at coronavirus spread in 17 K-12 schools in rural Wisconsin from late August to late November. They found disease spread was lower there than in the larger community. Only a handful of student infections were linked to in-school spread, with none recorded among staff members. Researchers say widespread masking and keeping students in different grades separated helped slow in-school transmission. The report concludes that opening schools might be done safely with multiple mitigation efforts in place and that having kids in classrooms could make them more likely to comply with public health recommendations. For NPR News, I'm Sam Whitehead in Atlanta. Stocks closed mostly lower today. The Dow down 22 points. The Nasdaq was down 9 points. The S&P fell 5 points. This is NPR. Support for NPR <laughs> comes from NPR stations. Other contributors include the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, supporting those working towards a day when no one has to choose between paying rent, putting food on the table, and protecting their health and the health of others. RWJF.org. Good evening at 6.04. I'm Jeff Cohen in for John Henry Smith. Local and state lawmakers came together today to outline proposed legislation to make broadband internet accessible to more Connecticut residents. They argued that fast internet is no longer a luxury, but a necessity during the pandemic, providing access to telehealth visits and remote learning. Nick Simmons, who's managing the initiative for the governor's office, says this legislation would streamline several processes that speed up installation across the state. There's going to be a, a big mapping component where we're going to partner oh. with our providers um, to understand uh, where fiber is across the state um, and create robust maps for companies, citizens, municipalities. Simmons says the goal is to achieve widespread broadband by 2025. And today is the start of the annual point in time count, a joint effort to help identify people experiencing homelessness in their communities. The Connecticut Coalition to End Homelessness is partnering with the Connecticut Conference of Municipalities and is asking towns and cities to take part. But this year, COVID-19 means the effort won't use community volunteers. Instead, outreach and municipal workers will complete surveys on an ongoing basis via a web app. Last year, the count identified nearly 3,000 people who were homeless, a decline of 4% over the previous year. And Watertown High School will no longer be nicknamed the Indians. The Board of Ed voted 4-3 to three Monday to drop the name, joining six other public high schools and retiring Native-inspired mascots and nicknames over the last several months. The Hartford Current reports the retirement will take effect no later than July 1st. This is Connecticut Public Radio at 6.06. I'm Peter O'Dowd. California Democratic Congressman Ro Khanna joins us to talk about the party's legislative priorities, what working in a divided Congress might look like, and Donald Trump's upcoming impeachment trial. Also, are some people gaming the system to jump in line for a coronavirus vaccine? That's next time on Here Now. Listen, tomorrow afternoon at 3. From NPR News, this is All Things Considered. I'm Ari Shapiro in Washington. And I'm Elsa Chang in Los Angeles. President Biden announced a plan today to boost the supply of COVID-19 vaccines. He says the government is buying 200 million more and that it's working with states to get them out efficiently. Here to talk about these plans is NPR's Ping Wong. Hey, Ping. Hey, Elsa. So states have been complaining that vaccines have been in scarce supply. So what exactly is Biden doing to improve the situation? Well, Biden announced both a short-term and a mid-term boost to vaccine supply today. In the short term, over the next three weeks, he says, states will be getting a total of around 10 million doses per week, which is about an increase of 20% over what they have been getting. That boost comes mostly from the drug company Moderna ramping up its production. And the other big announcement he made today was that the government is in talks with Pfizer and Moderna to buy a lot more vaccines. Biden says a deal to purchase 200 million more doses of these vaccines will soon be finalized. That means that the U.S. should have a total supply of 600 million doses of these vaccines by the end of the summer, which is enough to give two shots to most of the U.S. population. Okay, well, I get that that helps with supply, but I thought part of the problem was getting shots into actual arms. What can Biden do to speed that up? 
Well, Biden said that one of the things that states have told him is that it's been really hard to plan when they don't know how many vaccines to expect from week to week. So today, the administration is also pledging to give states a clear, reliable heads up on how many vaccines they can expect over the next three weeks. And this is going to continue as, you know, three weeks ahead of time each time. Claire Hannon from the Association of Immunization Managers told me in an email, yes, 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 to more stable allocation information in advance. This is something that states have been asking for since the start of vaccine distribution. And there's been a lot of confusion because allocations have been changing week to week. But Jim Blumenstock from the Association of State and Territorial Health Officials says there are three limiting factors in vaccine distribution. The recipe for success in any type of campaign are the three S's, staff, stuff, and space, okay? So when we talk about the stuff, that's principally the vaccine. And in terms of increasing staff and space, Biden has talked about hiring a lot more vaccinators to help staff vaccination sites and also launching FEMA-supported mass vaccination sites and mobile vans to get vaccines out to places that might not have, like, a huge hospital nearby. Biden said today that the first of those FEMA sites would launch soon and that thousands of local pharmacies will begin administrations come February. Okay. Well, what do you think, Ping? Do you think the pace of vaccinations will noticeably pick up with these measures? I mean, I think these will certainly help, and and Biden certainly hopes so. You know, he said that when his team arrived, the vaccine distribution program didn't look so good. The vaccine program is in worse shape than we anticipated or expected. But he says that they've been spending the past week just diagnosing the problems. And even as he announced some concrete steps that he's taking to improve vaccine distribution today, he warns that there's a long way to go before the pandemic gets brought under control. But the brutal truth is, It's going to take months before we can get the majority of Americans vaccinated. Months. In the next few months, masks, not vaccines, are the best defense against COVID-19. Biden and his administration have been big proponents of masking. You know, they've been encouraging Americans to engage in 100 days of wearing masks in public, and they've been highlighting all the science that supports it, too. That is NPR's Ping Wong. Thank you, Ping. Thanks for having me. All right, so that is the news out of the White House this afternoon. But what is the view from the states? Well, as distribution moves beyond healthcare workers, there's very little in common from one place to the next. We're talking about residency requirements or prioritizing teachers over seniors. So we're going to spend the next several minutes talking through how things have been going around the country. And to do that, I'm joined now by Amelia Templeton from.